Amen. 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 I hope we can engage in what the Holy Spirit is going to minister into our hearts this morning. So far, it has been so great. It's so good when we can celebrate Jesus, isn't it? With all our heart, all our strength, all our joy. But this morning, I really believe God and I speak to our hearts, and I pray that we're going to gain in understanding. And uh, the first statement I want to make this morning is, faith is not stupid, okay? Because sometimes we try to stand in faith without understanding. And faith comes from understanding too. As we hear and we hear the word of God, God ministers into our hearts understanding. The Bible says we're going to know the truth and the truth will set us free. Amen. And we know who the truth is. The truth has a name. Amen. The name of, the name of truth is Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the word became flesh and lived, camped, tent among us. And the Bible says that who the sun sets free, they are free indeed. So the Bible is talking about the word and Jesus as the same thing. is the revelation of Christ. It's God being revealed to us in a way that we can understand, comprehend. And maybe we cannot fully comprehend, but we can understand enough to stand for what we believe. Amen. So I pray this morning that we can gain understanding. And I want to talk about people of faith. People of faith. In these days, we need people of faith. We don't need people full of gifts. Gifts, they're going to be manifested. But we have plenty of gifts. We need people of faith. Amen. We don't need hard work. We need people of faith. Amen. And to be people of faith, we need to understand faith a little bit. And I started sharing my heart in the prayer meeting, saying that sometimes we are crying out for breakthroughs, for revivals, as if revivals was to be pulled out from somewhere far from where we are. That if revival was in heaven waiting for us, to pray hard so God could open something out there in front of heaven. Something would be put out. Let me tell you, even though the picture is good, it's not necessarily deep in understanding. The kingdom of God is not in heaven anymore or just in heaven. Where the kingdom of God is today, people? Amen. Amen. I, I, I'm glad we have... Clever people in the church, you can talk, amen? Sometimes we pray for the King of God as the King of God was somewhere far from us that we're still waiting. Some of us, we're waiting for the thousand years and for some of us, we're waiting to go to heaven, but the King of God is already here. Here, in the heart of every believer of Jesus Christ, the King of God is in you in Jesus' name. If you have surrendered your life to Christ, and you have called you a Savior and Lord, you are His kingdom. Amen. Yes, we are in a process of being built, and in a process of being growing in understanding, and more you understand, more you surrender. I remember a few years ago, not a few years ago, but not long ago, somebody called and said, Pastor, I have heard that you have, we need to repent just once. And I know where people are coming from because maybe when you repent to be saved and the Lord saved you, it's true. But let me tell you, repentance has to do with understanding and knowledge. More you know of God, more you repent from your own ways. Amen. How can I repent from something that I don't know yet? I can feel sorry, I can feel bad, but you have the myth, methanoia, that's the Greek word for repentance. We need understanding. 
We need the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus within us, producing understanding in a such way that what I used to think that was right now with the metanoia in my life, I can see it in a different way and I can turn around. Amen. So repentance is more than a feeling. Repentance is this work of the Holy Spirit in you by His power and His Word creating metanoia in your heart and in your mind in a such way that we see life different now. Amen? So I'm talking about understanding. So let us talk about faith this morning in Jesus' name. Hebrews 11 from 1 to 3 says, Now faith is the assurance. Now faith is the assurance of the things hoped for. I am assured of what I'm hoping for. The conviction of things not seen, but faith, we understand that universe was created by the word of God. So that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Sometimes we finish the statement on the very first Bible verse and we miss something. Now faith, the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things that are not seen yet. So I'm waiting for something, but if we carry on by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen is not made out of things that are visible. Let me unpack a little bit, even though I'm not preaching over it today. But if you really understand what the Bible is saying, we need to understand that even though we are hoping for, it has already been created. Because the Bible says that everything that we see and we don't see, they have been created by the unseen. Which unseen? The Word of God. The Word of God is Christ himself. It all has already been created. Amen. So even the blessing that you're praying for and you're hoping for, it already been created. The boyfriend that one day is going to be your husband, those who are praying for the husband, it has already been created, even if you're unable to see it. Amen? Hallelujah? The breakthroughs that we are looking for, the breakthroughs that we are in need for, we need to start to pray for them in the assurance that they are already. Even though in my heart I'm hoping for, they are reality in God's truth already. So God is not out there trying to create something for me because I prayed for now and now I put God under this massive rush that is looking forward and is working so hard to create what I asked him for. No. Faith is the assurance that everything I'm hoping for is already there. Where? In Christ. Amen. So this is faith. But let me tell you something again, and I will not read because it's a long text. And I encourage you as a church to this week to sit and meditate in Hebrews 11 and 12. If you don't know what you should be reading this week, Hebrews 11 and 12, we're going to give you some meat to digest. Amen? So, from verse 3 to verse 32, probably, I'll not read it, don't worry, but <clears throat> Paul, he's going to be writing about the story of these history makers. And this chapter 11 is called The Gallery of the Heroes of Faith. Because they're going to be named, at least some of them. For example, the Bible is going to name Abel, that by faith he gave a better offering than his brother Cain. By faith he gave a better offering. You can read that. 
By faith he gave, he offered a better offering. If you're going to speak about uh, Enoch, that he woke with God and was taken by God. By faith he woke with God, he woke with God, and he lived in righteousness, and he was taken by God. We're going to talk about Noah, that against everybody else, against the news of the days, he was made to feel ashamed because he started to build an ark, a boat, in a place where they never seen rain before. Can, can you hear here somebody building a boat where there was no river? There was no rain. He was called stupid. But because he believed in what the Lord has said, he lived in righteousness and became an instrument of God for a new beginning. He became an instrument in God's hand for a new beginning. The Bible talks about Moses that was put in this river because his parents believed that there was a purpose in their baby. By faith, the Bible says in this chapter that he's going to give up in his inheritance in Egypt. Now, legally, he was made a child of the princess. He was a grandson of Pharaoh. The Bible says he gave up on it to stand as a Hebrew and to believe that God had a plan in his life. He left wealth. I'm going to tell you again because it's going to be important. He left wealth. He gave up on wealth to be the God, the man that God called him to be. Amen? Did you get this one? It will speak about Abraham that today and to today we know him as the father of faith. A man that left the land of his parents to live and to go to a land where he didn't know where it was. He didn't go for the promise. He went to obey. What led Abraham was no a land, was a word. It was by faith that Abraham offered his only son not just to die, but, but, but he would kill the boy. He walked the journey of giving his son back to God. Even though I haven't read anything yet, based in everything I told you here, that is on chapter 11, I want to tell you that faith has more to do with giving than receiving. I need to build a foundation here before I preach. Okay, because somewhere people that have sold us just one side of faith that pleases me, myself, that is faith is to get something. Normally when I'm talking about faith is because we want something from God, isn't it? By faith I'm going to receive, by faith I want that, by faith I'm praying for that, and that's okay. But let me tell you the essence or essence essence of faith is about giving. What you're talking about, pastor? I'm talking about that Abel, before he received anything, because he believed in what he was in Christ or in God, he gave a better offering. He didn't receive a better offering. Amen? By faith, Noah, he gave himself to build an ark. By faith, Enoch, without gaining anything particularly, he walked in righteousness. By faith, he lived a godly life, giving his life to become a blessing. By faith, Abraham gave up in his worldly inheritance, in the money that he had with his father, to live a life according to God's way and God's will. By faith, this man, he gave his son. And my question is, if the Bible speaks about Abraham as the father of faith, 
I'm going to challenge you right now to tell me when Abraham prayed and seas were opened. When Abraham prayed and fire came from heaven. Never. When he prayed and water came out from the rock. Never. When Abraham prayed for somebody to get healed and they got healed. We never heard. Maybe he did, but he's not in the Bible. So which faith is that? A faith to live according to what God was shaping him. For him to become an instrument of God's glory. A faith to give, even though he had just one son, he believed God had called him to be a father of nations. If he believed on that, he was ready to kill the only seed he had. I'm going to tell you again because maybe I spoke too quickly and too excited about this. By faith, Abraham gave the only seed that would make him father of nations. He was ready to kill that. Why? Because he believed in the promise more than he believed on the seed. When the Bible says it's better to give than receive, why we always put our faith in order to receive? Somewhere, somehow, somebody taught me that I should put my faith to operate in my own benefit. When my faith is not to please me, but my faith is to please God. Amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So my faith is to please God, it's not to please myself. Do you understand how we are mixed in the teaching we receive? Because somewhere we have been placed as the need one. And maybe one day we were the need ones. But now in Jesus' name, you have everything you need to live a godly life. The Bible says I'm more than conquer, but I'm still living as somebody that needs to be conquered all the time. The Bible says he's my provider, but somehow I'm always struggling because my prayer is to find the provisions I don't have. When I should celebrate what I have already, it's Christ already within me. And if he's within me, I'm assured for what I'm hoping for. So just, it's not my preach, it's just a base here. Faith has to do more with giving than to receive. There are so many histories here in Hebrew 11 that will tell you that these people, they are not receiving, they are giving. So they are called people of faith. But now, let me start on verse 32. Hebrews eleven thirty two. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephah, of David and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quench the power of fire, escape the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weaknesses, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight, women received back their dead by resurrection, some were tortured, refused to accept release so that they might raise again to a better life. Others served mocking and flogging and, uh, and even chains and imprisonment. They are stoned, they are sawn in two, they are killed with sword. They went about in skins and sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was no worthy. Wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and in caves of earth. And all the things, though commanded through their faith, did not receive what was promised. 
Why? Since God provided something better for us. That apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Telling, in between them and us, in between the heroes of faith and us, there is a connection. We have a history to build together. So you and I, we are building history together with Abraham, Moses, Abel, Enoch. There is something in common in between us. Amen. So turn your Bible for verse 12 now. That is the next chapter. Says, Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. Therefore, because what we have read now is the continuation. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Who are the witnesses, guys? No, we are not. We, Moses is a witness. Abraham is a witness. Abel is a witness. These guys that they went before us, now they are there. Woohoo! Come on. We start the journey, guys. You'll be able to finish it. Enoch is there saying, come on, walk righteous, guys. Walk, walk properly. You're going to see what God is going to do in your life. Abel, there, guys, come on, bring the best of your hearts. Don't compare yourself to others. Bring your best and God is going to accept it. Abraham is there. Come on, guys. I know it's hard to let go, but let your circumstances go. Give to God and God is going to fulfill everything you need. Amen. This is Abraham saying, guys, I know it's hard, but I had to offer Isaac. Works. So the cloud of witnesses they are these brothers that they went before us. Let us also, now it's talking to us, lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you, you and I, may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Do you receive that in Jesus' name? These guys, they went before us. Jesus set the example. And now he said, this journey for you too. And I did before, so you will not grow weary or faint-hearted. So this morning I want to talk to people of faith, a very, very, very short message. If you understand that faith is the assurance in what Christ is, Everything is sorted, amen. And if you understand that faith is to understand what Christ is, now you understand that in his very nature, he is a giver. My faith is to please God. How? Receiving or manifesting? Hallelujah. Our faith is to manifest what we have so far. Today, if I have just one piece of meat in my table and 10 of you arrive there there is two choice I can hide that and wait until you go home <laughs> because I'm scared I will not have enough or I start to cut it and to make pieces where we can share and what about tomorrow tomorrow I know that my redeemer lives is the reason that we go there and bless people, not knowing if they're going to respond. We give what we have. By faith, we will see breakthroughs. Even if physically we don't see, we have done because we have Christ, faith in Christ. We know what we carry. I don't help people because they can give me a return. I bless people because what I have and what I am. In Jesus' name, amen. We need to stop working for return. It's not the gospel that pre people preach there. Come to the church, you're going to have a return. Sow a seed, you're going to have a return. Give an offering, and you're going to prosper. Stop it in Jesus' name. Stop it in Jesus' name. 
You know why we give? Because we are blessed. Even if I have just one coin, I give because I believe my Redeemer lives and you're going to be my provider. Amen. And let me tell you something here. Tomorrow I don't need two coins. I need just one. A lot of people give one coin to get you. If you lived with one coin today, you'll be able to live with two coins tomorrow too. And with this heart, if God can find this heart, he will be able to give you two. Be faithful to the small so you can be placed in greater things. But you know what? The devil has placed the wrong faith in us that I have my eyes always on the three or four coins. Not being faithful to the one. What should be faithful to the one? Living according to God's way. Giving, sharing, ministering, blessing. Working, serving. A lot of people, they come here and say, you know what? I don't feel that I should be doing anything because God has not spoken to me. Let me tell you, if God needs to speak to you for to serve in the church that you are part of, it's because you're like my little child at home that they can see the mess in and they don't care about it. Because when they start to grow and they start to see around and they start to mature, when they see something on the floor, you know what they do? They pick it up. Should we be strong for Sunday mornings? No, in Jesus' name. Because people of faith, they are ready to give. People of faith, they are ready to manifest. People of faith, they are ready to stir what they have already. We spoke about this last week, about the presence of God. Where is the presence of God, guys? Where is the presence of God? Within us, amen. So while you're praying, come Holy Spirit. When it's here already, we need to stir it. Lord, I know you are in the house already, Lord. I know you are within me, Lord. I know you are already placed a gift in me. It's time for me to be stirred and to manifest. Sometimes you say, I'm thirst. I'm thirst. And we are thirsty as if there was some well somewhere else. I need to go to the well. Where is the well, guys? I'm going to place within you a stream of living water. And from you, they're going to spring up. So if you are willing to see your family to be blessed, where the blessing is? Hallelujah. If you're looking for revival, where revival is? Hallelujah. It is faith. Because in Christ, I'm being made complete now. In Christ, I can start to stir the gift that is already within me. I want to see revival. You want to see revival, don't wait for the pastor Anderson to spend a hundred years in the month fasting for you and arrive here full of glory and I'm going to touch you and very often I don't use the jacket so how can I throw on you? What's going to happen to you? You didn't me pray for you? No, let me tell you, revival will come with which one of us? People of faith will come. I am ready. My bit I brought to the table. My gift I bring in. My faith I bring in. And we're going to build a table in this house. With your gift, with my gift, with my blessings, with your blessings. And we're going to bring prayers. We're going to pray for one another. We're going to bless one another. We're going to support one another. We're going to hug one another. A lot of us, we need hugs, don't we? But let me tell you, the best hugs is inside of you. The hug full of the Holy Spirit is already inside of you. You need to be hugged. Hug somebody. Come here, Elias, in Jesus' name. Very quick. Come here, come here, come here. Oh. I need somebody today to hug me. I need somebody today to fill with God's presence. I need somebody to pray for me. You know what? If Elias doesn't come, you know what I should do? Elias.
We can have a revival. Amen. I need to see my life to be multiplied. You start to share it. You, you want to grow, but you're keeping whatever you are to yourself. There is no growth without movement. There is no growth without movement. So let me tell you very quick here, three things that our faith, if you're a people of faith, you're going to have. First of all, faith will generate a new nature. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 to 10, For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of your works, so that no one may be boast. For we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that, should, that we should walk within, within them or with them. If you are people of faith, you have already a new nature. Through by faith, by grace through faith. What's it? Through the word of God. Because faith comes from hearing, hearing the word. I've been transformed. I'm saved now because by God's love I've been transformed. Transformed from what? Sorry, saved from what? A lot of us are still running away from the devil. The devil is our enemy. I don't run away from it. Have you heard the Bible says there is a battle in between your spirit and the devil? Is a battle in between your spirit and flesh. Amen? So who are battling here? Amen. When you are saved, I don't have the time today. A lot of people, they believe the devil made mankind to sin. Was the serpent that sinned or was Adam and Eve? Huh? So Adam and Eve, they bow down to their own desires and they sin. Yes, they've been tempted. Why are you still blaming the devil? The devil is going to keep tempting you. But you are the one that needs to make the choice. So my battle is in between my spirit that is ready against my flesh that's weak. So by faith, or by grace, through faith, now the Lord starts to transform and save me from what? From the devil? No, from my own self. Myself would live by its own desire. When Eve looked to the tree, what did she say? It looks good. And I'm hungry. Looks good to it. Two choices. I obey what God has said, that is my faith, or I follow my desires. My desires, you try to use my faith for me to benefit. God's faith in me, will you minister in myself strength for me to become what he made me already. If this battle is not for you to eat, the apple or not. This battle is for you to stand before the serpent says, I am a believer in what God spoke into my life. So, serpent, get away and desires. I surrender you in Jesus' name to stand for what God called me to be. Holy, holy, was the reason Abel come, not comparing himself to his brother, brought his best and said, Lord, take, it's yours. You know what happened? God blessed Abel. Now, the text we are saying that people of faith, they are ready to go through the hardest time in their lives. And you know how they're going to overcome? Because they have already received the word of faith. So there is no death, there is no prison, there is no mock. They can mock us, guys. They can tell all kinds of things about us. The world is in need of people with strong mindsets. 
What we see today is a generation being moved by people's opinion. It's time to move to that direction. There we go. It's time to move to the other side. There we go. We are not able to stand and believe in our call to stand in who we are in Christ. We are shaping even our theology to be able to accommodate the demands. Faith is to stand in what God has already made us. I am assured. He's still hoping for it, but today I'm assured in Christ. That I can be mocked. I can be pushed. But I will not move. I was listening another day at a podcast. And you are talking about not generation. What's the last generation that they call now? Y? I think it's the Y or Z. I'm lost already. There's so many generations. The, the, the guys that are 20s and younger than that. Very clever generation, the sense of information, okay? And we can debate about everything because we can access everything. I can talk about NASA. I just go to Facebook, YouTube. I believe because I read something, I can speak about that. I have heard, even though I don't understand, I speak. But anyway, there was a podcast saying that the generation that we are dealing today, they like to debate. They like to talk and they want to learn. And they are saying that comes to church, they are more ready to come to debate in church that they have a traditional preaching than a preaching that that's come to please what they already know. Because they say people that they change every single day what they preach, they are just like us moving around and following the next Trained. So they said, you right to go to somebody that always believes the same thing, even though can oppose what we believe, but at least we are safe about what he's saying. I can disagree, but at least I know that he believes on that. So what does it mean? That even the world sometimes look at us and say, guys, you're too insecure in what you believe. You don't stand for what you believe. Every flag we raise here, you try to accommodate within you. Every proposal we make here, we try to make and accommodate that. You never propose something different. It's time for the church, for the believers, to stand and to be people of faith. What? Accusing people not at all. And I'm going to open a bracket here that maybe I'm going to offend some of you. The church is not here to speak about homosexuality. The church is here to speak about man and woman. Hallelujah. Another day I was challenged because apparently the Pope made a statement to bless the same-sex marriage or whatever it looks like for them right now. Is the church saying something? I said no. Because I'm not here to preach in what the Pope is saying or to preach about the same-sex marriage. What I'm here to keep standing and believing for what God has called us to believe that we believe in a family that is built with a woman and a man. In this way, I'm going to preach whatever they say there. It's okay. I don't need to be accusing. I need to be preaching about that. I need to keep standing in faith. In Jesus' name. But why we are not standing in faith? Because you are trying to respond. Something that you are trying to accommodate. It's time to be different, people. It's time to stand straight. In faith. And be people of faith. That even though if we don't receive anything here on earth, we're going to live righteously. You know what has been the major problem? 
Even though we believe our inheritance in heaven, we're still fighting so badly to get something here. Pastor, are you saying that they shouldn't build anything here? No. As God blesses you, be wise and glorify God. But your mindset, if it's just to build here, you're going to engage in what the world is building. And I'm here to work hard to bless my family. Don't take me wrong. You are here to bless your family, to bless your household, to work hard. The Bible doesn't believe in, in laziness. We are here to work hard and hard and hard because we are people of faith. And to build up, but not to put our trust on it. Because even if I work hard and I don't prosper here, I know my prosperity is granted in heaven. So Enoch woke with God. The Bible doesn't say he was a wealthy man. The Bible doesn't say he, he saw healings. The Bible doesn't say he saw fire. The Bible says he walked righteously. You know what has happened? Heaven. Heaven. The author of Hebrews saying, some women, they rather should be persecuted be prisoners for the sake of honoring God then to be free and to deny what they believed. The question I finish today here is how much faith are we carrying within us? And which kind of faith is that? A faith to receive or a faith to give what you are already. And I'm appointed because sometimes it's what I have no is what you are. The world is in need of people of faith, walking holiness, peace, love, compassion, forgiveness. Are we ready to be people full of faith that when the different people they enter to their door, we're going to be able to embrace them? Even if they believe in something completely different, even they stand completely different, do we have enough faith to be able to give? Or are we scared to be contaminated? Huh? Because there is a moment in history that the church said, don't allow them to come in because they're going to contaminate us. Let me tell you in Jesus' name to finish it. Jesus is walking. And a very contagious lady touched him. She had an issue of blood. On those days, somebody in that condition was considered cursed, dirty. Anybody bleeding had to be aside in society until it stops. But that woman is bleeding for 12 years. She shouldn't be there. You know what? She make her way through and she touched Jesus. What Jesus said, somebody has contaminated me. Sin has touched me. There is sinners in our midst. There is sick people in our midst, guys. We need to be careful. They are bringing something different here, guys. Be careful. We need to be holy. Come on, guys. Don't allow them to touch you. What did Jesus said? He said, power came out from me. Whoever he is, whoever she is, bring. Because I want to bless. I want to transform. Church is a place of transformation. But the only way it's going to be able to happen is when people of faith will be able to stand in what they believe and allow themselves to be touched. What you carry is enough to transform somebody else's life. What you have is enough for you to have a godly life. What you have is enough already for you to pray for somebody and to, somebody to be blessed. 
What you have already is enough for you to give. Pastor, I don't have much. Give what you have. Pastor, I cannot do much. Do what you can. I don't have great capabilities. Whatever you have and you are, if it's brought with all your heart, you're going to be like Abel's offering. We're going to be fully accepted by God. And you're going to be blessed in Jesus' name. So people of faith, let us stand up together in Jesus' name. I said something, and I need to finish. Three things. Faith generates a new nature. But also faith generates conviction. Habakkuk chapter 2, 4 says, Behold, his soul is puffed up, is not upright, upright within him, but righteous shall live by his faith. When you have faith, you are convicted to live a life according to God's way. And the third thing is faith generates movement. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 7 to 9 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good, what? Hallelujah. And we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please. People of faith are always in movement. Because we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. When you leave your home in the morning, do you know everything God you know will do? Probably you don't. By walk by faith, knowing that God is going to help us. When you start your studies, your new career, your job, your family, whatever it is, do you know how it's going to look like in five years' time? We don't. By woke, full of faith, knowing that our promises, they are in Christ, and because we are men and women of courage. I'm praying for revival. I'm praying for a movement of the Holy Spirit. But I acknowledge that I had to be stirred. The Bible says that the shadow of the disciples was healing people. The question made on the prayer meeting is, do you believe there is power in a shadow? No, there isn't. I'm sorry to tell you. There isn't power in the shadow. But how the shadow heal people? Because their shadow was reproducing a movement of those who had purpose and courage. Their shadow was the movement of those men of faith walking around. If you leave your house, if you go home, if you go to work, if you come back home, under the movement of the Holy Spirit, whatever you are, whatever you say, whatever you establish, it is going to be an instrument of God's blessing. So it's not just your hand praying for people. It's your movement in society going to change people. People of faith, you don't need to pray for all, but you need to move among people with the testimony and the shadow of your testimony. We're going to bring something new and fresh for our society. In Jesus' name, we need people of faith to be in movement. Amen. Father, help us to live by faith, Father. Help us, Lord, to make a movement. That's not based on our needs. It's not based in what we can have.
but based in what we can give, Lord. Because everything we need is in the house. Everything we need is within us, Lord. You assured us that we have everything for a godly life. We carry the Holy Spirit. We carry your word. We carry your promises. We carry, Lord, your power in Jesus' name. So don't allow us to be moved by fear or need. Help us to be moved by vision and faith. Ken, whatever you have is enough. Keep moving. 